Hello, Gabriel, and welcome to the NFT podcast. How are you? Where are you based? Hello, how are you? Thanks very much, Francesco. I'm in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, right now. And, and I'm going to show you, I'm like here in, in this area. Ah, in oh, this part. we have not got the yeah. localization too. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. And so why are you there? What's, uh, what's your job? I, I, so I know you are a lot of stuff. You, you do a lot of stuff, but you are also a professor like in Argentina, right? Yeah, I'm a professor here in the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina. And I also was a student there. And it's like this place changed my whole life. And now I, I work there. Oh, amazing. So one life spent there. For how long? No, I think I, like, yeah, one life, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like 25 years or something like oh, that. Yeah. Amazing. So it seems but like... When, right now it's it's closed due to the COVID. So I'm like um, making my classes here in my house. So that's why I have like this weird set. Because <laughs> when, I, when I give my presentations, I do something like this. So... I can show PowerPoints while I'm like, <laughs> so I became a, a kind of, of YouTuber or something like that. Yeah, yeah, but this is the most futurist, futuristic way of doing <laughs> presentation I've seen during this COVID. So I hope that all the professors and teachers that are, li are listening right now we are going to write you and say, hi, how do you do it? Who want to do it too? Because it will be more interactive. It's very simple. I, it's very simple. I use OBS, which is like a very common software. Me too, yeah. I can, sh I can also show you. I don't know if you are seeing me. Yeah, yeah. Here. I can see, I can see. I can and, see. and it was like very like an emergency thing to do because uh, well, we can't go there and give attending to classes. So uh, we are like in a design uh, design university. So yeah. also for all the teachers, we have to give a solution by making a design uh, yeah. stuff. So, yeah, so that's yeah, why... Yeah. That's why we can we cannot make classes in a Zoom with a, yeah. with the, the the wrong tools. So that's why many teachers in University of Buenos Aires start learning about how to communicate with the students and don't yeah. using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, a, as, a, as a design university, you need digital tools. Yeah. So otherwise, you are, you are not a design university, right? <laughs> and yeah. so, what do you teach? I teach. A, Image and sound design is the name of of the career, and yeah. uh, and I also like give classes in my own university, which is why you were asking uh, later be, be, uh, after we go before we go live, and this yeah. is like my own university called UR, and I your home I so have, you you founded it, yeah yeah oh, and great. it's free and. Uh, free and public. Here is the last year uh, speciali specialization in uh, super ADA reality. And I wow. have like 36 uh, classes and you can wow. watch them on, on YouTube. It's like the same I'm doing right now. Me talking about many subjects related to art, media archaeology, and VR and technology and, and whatever amazing and, i will, I will right look now, for them yeah and yeah. i will link it of course here in the description so that everyone can look for them and right now uh two two days ago my first classes of this year was about maria montessori i don't know if you uh, yeah i know very well and I, I used exactly exactly that video that you're showing me i used that video yeah. uh, last year in, in my previous job to do, to do like an interview between Maria Montessori and another person. So I really know Maria Montessori in that video, great. Wow, yes, and that's why I, I was talking about making our own tools to teach. It's like she built from, from scratch the yeah. pedagogical material. So we are like in the same kind of, uh, of situation here. We have to build our own tools so we yeah. can still educate in. Of students. course, of course. Yeah. So you are the first one. People, you are the first one that I know that connects 
Maria Montessori, so the Montessori and Education, that I also know that uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, the CEO of, CEO of Amazon, uh, founded the Bezos Academy that is based on, on Montessori and Education. And so you, you, you connected it with uh, art, crypto art, that is like what you do? Um, I, I don't know if I build that, that connection, but um, I think that that technology uh, with an aperture in the way you implement to, in classrooms can be a, a way to to improve the way yeah. our students then integrate in in the world. So. Yeah. Um, in, in these years, we teach like CGI, 3D, video games, a lot, of, a lot of tools, but also a lot of theoretical frameworks to understand how media and how new technology and art history and design history, like, in, so we don't use the term like new technology because we, we made a, a lot of investigations about um, the history of BR or the history of CGI, and it's it's not new. It's like hundreds Crazy. of years that there's stuff. So our students start like building this uh, like this group, which called CryptoArt uh, in two thousand, like like three or four years ago. Amazing. So many many students start to organize it and start to to build like. Uh, art works in in nft like yeah. kind of pioneers so i learn about nft because of my students oh so um, you were teaching you were teaching like vr and the stuff and they started with nft when two two three years ago you're saying yeah they were like very oh, wow. pioneers of uh, and wow. in known origin and super rare i'm going to show you some works of of this group because i have wow. it here so you are uh, like teaching and you are already teaching NFTs at university while NFTs are like a trend topic, but not so trending. No, no, I, I didn't know any, uh, anything about crypto art. No, no, NFT. now, 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 now you are no, like teaching no. NFTs, right? So yeah, no, uh, we teach a lot of uh, tools and students start using it to make NFT and crypto art. These wow. are some of of these students wow wow and and then it, it happened that uh, i start to get interested in the stuff they were doing and then uh, in january i start doing my own stuff in in F nft but we don't have like um we don't teach at the university about specific nft nft okay Okay, yeah, you teach about different art and people, yeah, that use that art. Yeah, because we, because I amazing. don't, because I, I I didn't know anything about NFT yet to to be able to teach. Yeah, it's like a yeah, yeah, great. And so yeah, you you, you like have like a community inside the university of all these people doing NFTs, and you are like selling together all this stuff or die or like selling separately because i also see that you you are selling your uh, art your nfts about on uh, where on non region right and ready yeah or super yeah or super i rare. start yeah i start like uh, getting into and and make my profile in non origin and start like publishing my stuff here and yeah. also in in foundation and crypto Arch, which is the the group that these students and other uh, not students from Argentina, they are like building like a network, not only to sell together. They have a Discord where they share a lot of information yeah. and they, they help each other. And so they are it's... also very, very critic about the medium. They are not like optimistic uh, yeah. cult of NFT. Because they yeah. are like <laughs> problematizing. And yeah. it's very interesting because they, they are like very generous with people that are starting to make in NFT. So they make like a fund to help to, to the gas it's fees. Amazing. So yeah, they are like very, very generous. This is and... really the the power the power of a community that I would like to see here in Italy and everyone else in the world. Because too many too many times when you're in school, you feel like alone. You don't feel like that you are uh, mm. you are in the same path of all the other students in your class. You just think about your 
your votes uh, but this is amazing because you are build you have built a so incredible community inside this university and it's also a digital community that uh, that it's is already it's helping each other on discord that is a very powerful tool for schools so you are the first one uh, that i know that use discord for education and wow um, but it, do you think it's because yeah, we are talking about no, the, 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 the most amazing thing is that they make them they, themselves. I yeah. don't yeah. help them. I like <laughs> learning, learn from them. Yeah. So you are learning from your students. Yeah, yeah. Oh. In about NFT and about hmm. all this, yes. And they are very patient. And they they said yeah. they told me you have to build a Twitter. And I said no, I don't know use Twitter. We said, okay, but I don't you know. Yeah. Go Twitter. Okay, we will teach you. It's okay, so I build my Twitter and then I understand the only way I can like sell my stuff it's about communicating in, in Twitter. So I build my profile and they, it, then I, I get friends with so Twitter because a, I used a, to hate yeah. it. Yeah. It's a, it's a peer to peer education in, the, in yeah. a virtual world. Uh, do you support yeah. like this kind of peer-to-peer -peer education, or do you prefer like a school where there are teachers that only teach without in learning from students? Because I personally think that at, we learn when we teach. So if we create this double power from students to teachers and teachers to students, we will have a happier school. So do you see benefits of this in your school and in your education system? Yes, because when I have many professors that understand that, so the, the Carlos Trilnik, a lot of professors that I have teach me in that way, in a collaborative peer-to-peer -peer and all that you're saying. So it's, right. it's like a tradition in, in this university that uh, the relation between students and teacher are very close. Um, and it's inevitable in our speciality with this design because yeah. The, the young generations have uh, a perception of what's going on that you have to understand what's going on in, in their time or in, in their heads. Yeah. For course. example, in the, in the working area, we are not preparing them anymore to, for the future of the working. For example, yeah. these students are ma gaining, making their life not working in a design studio or they, they build of their course. own way to to support themselves economically. So it, that's very, yeah. very weird. Yeah. This if is we very, play, yeah, yeah. that role trend, playing, that yeah, this, this role playing game that the professor, it's like a kind of client and the student has to please you and you make like a simulation of the future. It's not any more valuable because yeah. they, they have to prepare themselves from a different future. That, Yep. Yeah, because new, of course, because new jobs are born every day. So imagine teaching NFTs at university, imagine learning something like that, because I personally dropped university because we didn't even use computers. So how could I learn wow. some digital, jo digital job if we didn't use computer after two years of university? Of course, when I wow. dropped out, I started a digital marketing course. And from that, like I, <laughs> I bought computers over computers <laughs> instead of books. But yes, of course, this... And do you think this is like a tradition just of, of your university or do, or do you think it's more um, related to Argentina itself that it's evolving like in this stuff? In, so always more interesting in virtual world, in VR and of course NFTs, mm. crypto art. Or do you think it's like just a university? Can you remember me the name of your university? Yes, it's the University of Buenos Aires, ah, okay. which is a, a public university. And it's very massive. We have a lot of, of students. And I think that it's, it's not a plan. It's something that it's happening because of the, of the profile of the students and the information and, and some kind of chaos or liberty on, in the way the university yeah. struggles with the, their economic problems, the low... Uh, how do you say the low payment they do from yeah, the teachers? Yeah, yeah, so everyone who is teaching the, there it have a yeah. lot of passion, yeah. or it's an idiot. <laughs> you don't have like <laughs> yeah. so so yeah, teachers yeah. <clears throat> in this yeah. like very contrast spectrum, 
uh, it make like students like very uh, very powerful statement of what what they want to do and there's yeah. a lot of struggle it's not an ideal place university of buenos aires it's a very conflict scenario so in that scenario, it can emerge a lot of, of wonderful stuff. I don't know. Amazing. So, so wonderful stuff emerges from conflict. This is what you're saying. Yeah. For example, we are always when when I was young, I was like idealizing Bauhaus or Italian Milan design uh, universities, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think I was in the wrong place. But when you start reading about Bauhaus, for example, you see that it's a very complex institution. Yeah. People dying. Uh, German war, I don't know. It have a lot of, of conflict. So then I yeah. I understand that a chaos scenario, it's it's great also for developing yeah. a change. Yeah. Great. Uh, and are you are you doing like something with you or your students to share your values, share your works, share share everything that you do to other universities in Argentina? Because of course it, this, this can be something that can enrich the other university. And if all the schools in, uni in, in Argentina, all the universities in Argentina will be great and will be like at the same level of conflict, but also wonderful out so, uh, outputs, it will increase the level of the jobs. Because, of course, you, I think you agree with me that school is the base of society. So if you increase the level of school, and if you adapt it with digital tools like you are doing, you will have a better country for everyone. Yeah, I, I, um, we, we start like a, <clears throat> a research project called Proyecto IDIS in the University of Buenos Aires, which is like a, a database, which uh, now you're, you're seeing. Every yeah, yeah, time see, you get see. in, you can see that it can random originate this this patchwork and yeah. then you you can see like stuff about artists about um artworks and it's like a <clears throat> a database of design art and media archaeology so right. we put this available to any institution in latin america because it's in, in spanish so we are like trying to build networks with different universities that that speak Amazing. Spanish for now. And is it I also working? work. Are you receiving mm -hmm. like, uh, is it working? Are you receiving like feedback from other universities? Yes. We, when we go to the Google Analytics, we see there and there is there's a lot of universities like using it. And Great. this is built up by students also that make like um uh, project e this program so they have like in a semester to put more data inside this database so this is wow. a way like to building network between universities i also work wow. in a private university uh, for uh, like two years uh, one year ago and it's also a new experience for me to see like other ways to teach in that it's not the public university wow Wow, congratulations, yeah. because you are sharing for free all these materials. And I see you are a very busy person that works in different <laughs> universities, different projects. So, of mm. course, it, it's amazing that you're putting a lot of effort in this. And you are not even making other people pay for that. You're sharing it for free just for a, for a, for a greater mission that is bring this value to everyone. Because, of course, if you give, then you will receive all this value back, I think. Great. Yeah, it's it's like a collective research in Ur, which is like my public free university. Um, it's it's a, a, a way to connecting people and friends. It's, it's not like a mission. It's something that make me like happy. It's also like a kind of of artwork. I, I it's Great. something yeah. I put time, but not because I am a good person. It's like <laughs> I put I my madness. I put my madness <laughs> there, so. Uh, <laughs> so, it's, I, so you say, so you say yeah. I cannot sell my madness because <laughs> I just let yes. it there for free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. And so let, yeah. instead, let, let's talk about what you sell. Let's talk about because about NFTs in the sense that you are a VR sculpture, right? What's a VR sculpture and how you are doing your art? I am uh, with this project. It is, we start like uh, having some funds 
So we invest them in uh, VR headsets and, uh, and another like toys. So we start like experimenting with that and I started like building, here I have a video where I can show you how I sculpt. Um, I was like working with 3D sculpting, but then I start like, um, like well, researching how it feels to build in, in a VR scenario. And here is the, the yeah. way I, I that. When you so this have is the, your, this is your building. Uh... Yeah, this is wow. where I am right now. Well, and, and in your hand, you have this this control and you have a, wow. tri a tiger and then you like make a blob and you can sculpt with that. Wow. So here is like a more advanced. This is like a session of, of VR. So I'm experimenting with, with this kind of stuff. Wow. And then I, I render it and sometimes I make them like like rotate or sometimes yeah. I like take a photograph and wow. uh, and like it's a, a photography of a, of sculpture so I'm currently so it seems like this. a lot more easy to create art with that in the sense I've never made like sculpture in my life but do you think that anyone that puts a VR headset on his head on his head and just download this software that I don't know what what software do you use I'm using right now some called Canova. Canova. So imagine that yeah. anyone can use this Canova and just with its hands, he can create a sculpture like that. Um, it's, it, it's, if you are like already a, a trained sculptor, and for the first time you do it, it's very easy that you start like building the way you model in, in real. It's like a, a Wacom tablet. If you know how to draw on paper, then you you master it quickly. Right. The difference is that uh, you're working with no gravity and with no like force, so it behaves kind of different because you have to you you add a material and you subtract material, and wow. and it's wonderful because it doesn't uh, it doesn't fall. So it have a and for yeah. for a trained sculptor it will be like brain because you wow. can you can do the, the the volume works in a in a very different way than in, in material and i well i made stuff that it's not figurative like abstract and my struggle is to to don't do figurative sometimes i'm i'm modeling and i make a hand or a, like something that looks like a face and my work it's constantly that getting in in one state of mind that I start like building and trying to to equilibrate and make holes, but I don't know what I do. I, <laughs> I, I so, yeah. so you 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 don't give a name to what you do. You just invent. No, this this is amazing. So of course so you, you can. This is a great. I, I always thought that for me, sculpture is is impossible because if you do a mistake, you cannot come back. But with this, you can definitely do mistakes and you can delete and come back. Wow. Yeah, wow. you have and, the, the undo. Wow. And so you you are selling these artworks like as NFTs, right? Yeah, I start like um, making when my did, stuff. When did you start? That, yeah. When did you start that, with NFTs? Yes. With NFT in January. Here January. it said, since January 21, they approved me in known origin. Great. And this was my first NFT. Let's see um, your first NFT. Did you sell it? And, uh, I sell one because I make like a uh, three edition. And okay. It, it, and it was like very emotion to sell my, my first piece because it also for us is a lot of money this in Buenos Aires dollar yeah, fluctuates zero, but yeah. yeah but for it was the highest sale I made in my life like oh, ten wow. years working in galleries and, wow. and and showing my my material stuff and all that it was like 
a, a complete blow of mind to sell something on internet, which I don't know. For many years, this is my Instagram. I yeah, and you did not sell work. anything with your Instagram before. <laughs> yeah, I, I I I used to work only for for post stuff in Instagram to say I am alive. I'm doing this with no commercial interest. Yeah, yeah, just to share so, art. Yeah. So for for me this was like mind blowing the the yeah. NFT. Then you start to to research and to start getting into and you see a lot of stuff that it's not that utopic. Yeah. Uh, but but for me it was like great. This is my last NFT, which is like a, a still life and it's very sad. So right now I'm doing whatever I want and trying to to make like three collections here in, in known origin. One is about uh, specimens, like things that look like, like have an entity, then places which are like scenarios where something is happening and photogrammetry, which is this technique of uh, 3D scanning real stuff with many photographs that you merge in a software and you make a 3D model. And it have a lot of mistakes and, and glitches that make the the model look like imperfect that I like yeah. very much. Yeah. yeah, but I love it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're saying me that NFTs are, were, are been your first soft opportunity to monetize from your heart after years and years. So will you will you advise any digital artists to post his NFTs on uh, I don't know, known origin or any other marketplace? Yeah, I think that um, it's it's great for starters that uh, showing itself or also on Radible because you don't have the curation that yeah. that that can stress you out because you have to to apply in known origin or give a or they have to give you an invitation in foundation or super rare it's like a golden ticket you get. And many starting artists are asking for invitations and are very frustrated because they can get into these curated platforms. Yeah. I will suggest that start doing it in, in open seas on Rarible and wait yeah. until they can get into, not and to why, start yeah. making. Yeah. And why why do you 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 also start with no origin because it's some I think the non origin instead of uh, open sea Rarible it's a uh, less mainstream. So why do you like non origin as a war sculpture? Because when I start like learning about NFTs, I read an article. It was called like Crypto Art for Starters or something like that. It was yeah. a page, and I read that, and it, it it said, and I applied to every platform. Ah, okay. Non origin okay. to super rare, and non origin was uh, it took one month and they read my application and they approve. Right now it's more difficult that in January because yeah. it, it was like an open application and you put all your data and then they, yeah. they approve me. And there is why I choose known origin. And then in, in foundation, you have to get invited. And I yeah. was invited by a great artist I know in, in, in Twitter which is called Bumpy, and I love his hard work. Yeah. I don't know him. I don't know where is he's from or anything. <laughs> I just start to make me give him a lot of, of your art is great. And then he get into foundation and he invite me. So for me, it's like I'm very proud that he invites me. And yeah. then well, I have to invite some, some friends and it's like, it, that's it's very terrible because when you get in foundation, you start receiving a lot of requests of give me an invitation, and they only give you five invitations. Yeah, uh, and it's not it's not yeah. great to to be like the one yeah, who yeah. have invitations. Yeah, I like I like this system of like also clubhouse works in a similar way, right? That people can can invite you and join their channel. So I like mm. this system because. It's not just an open social for everyone because, of course, there are a lot of them, but there are also closed social that can. What do you think about it? Will do you think that they can increase the the, the quality of the social of the, of the social itself? 
and because of yeah. course there are millions of artists so it's better maybe mm. to something like that yeah some you have to do some I don't, it's a very problem of these platforms right now they have 1600 so if you see there are some stuff that i don't like but maybe it's a it's it's, so just it's not the just same. one yeah. one thousand and six hundred artists are on this platform, yeah. right, right now. Really? So it's yeah. very elitali elitalian platform, but anyone yeah. that wants to buy them can access. So like yeah. creators, okay. Yeah, every uh, yeah you have you can make a profile, but you can't mint as an artist. Uh, they have to to choose you from the application. Right. But even that, there's a lot of, of stuff I don't like, but maybe they, they have a value that I don't yeah. understand. Uh, and what, for... what, what, what do you think are the standard to, to entry in this platform? So why do they choose you? Why do we, they don't choose you? Based on your history, on the quality of your art, based on the fact that you are famous mm -hmm. or not, why do you think they choose you? I don't know. It's like a, a mystery. I, I think they, the, the curators of this platform, they don't even know. Because when I start, I didn't have a Twitter, which was like a very important feature they ask you. Yeah. And I, I didn't have a lot of, of followers in Instagram. Um, it's like a, like a mystery. Because many of these artists, if you research them, they don't have a fan base or something like that. Yeah. They just like pick it. I don't know. Maybe it's like kind of, of random or a very... The, 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 the human who is behind the yeah. creator see one image and like it or don't like it and process it in that way. Yeah. But I, I don't know. Yeah, and I the system so. in in foundation, you can see when I scroll down and I see the stuff, I, I think like I like it more than known origin. And the system is different because you don't have like cura official curators. You have this invitation system. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's me that I like more these, these kind of artwork. And sometimes the scroll down in known origin, I don't like it. But if you get in Rarible, which is open with no curation, yeah, you see totally like a, a lot of things. Like yeah, very, yeah, well, you will lose yourself, of course. Yeah, great. And so, uh, um, a question: If you, if someone buys uh, you an NFT on, uh, um, if you, if you buy an NFT on, on, on a platform, can you resell it on another platform? Is it? I don't know. It's something yes. that it happened to you. Yes, I buy one artwork from uh, from an artist who which is also a friend called Mariano Ramis to yeah. to see what happened because I love the artwork and also because I have I want to see what happened if you are a, a buyer. Yeah. This is the artwork I buy from him, and oh, I can interesting. Yeah, it's he works like with digital transfer monocopy of a sequence of of image and then he well, he processes it with artificial intelligence so that's why oh. the the ink do that. and then i can do wow. something yeah i can do something like to put it on sale again so if i sell it i well i, I earn that money and mariano ramis the get a 20 percent or something like that for 20%. forever so forever. every time Every time his artwork is reselled, he gets like his uh, his cut. So, so, so yeah, but I'm this, not going to sell this, this artwork because I <laughs> no no because it's too amazing to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So every time every time uh, um, a person sells NFT, the creator earns like a twenty percent. In this case, is the is this twenty percent like a number that you've seen a lot of times so it, or it varies a lot from one two three twenty fifty percent well what have you seen i i think in some platforms you can put that ah, number you can decide yeah uh, i don't know in in foundation i don't remember when you uh, mint here you can say uh, which person you you want yeah great great so um, that uh, that's also unusual in the traditional art market. When you yeah. sell a piece, you sell a piece, and the the owner sell it, and you don't have a cut from that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you you, that you was, don't even yeah. know. You don't even know. Yeah, you, you and you don't have to know. Yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. It's not necessary. 
here, here in the blockchain, you, you can know and you can trace and what they are saying in the future, a hundred years from now, you will have like a very documented uh, piece of the art history of, of the succession of owners. Yeah. Uh, when yeah, you see documentals think... yeah, about traditional art, you see like people in books and a lot of forgery and all that. Yeah, so like an history of transactions made made easier because uh, at this time the user interface like of the transaction transaction on the Ethereum blockchain or other blockchain are not so easy to like to understand maybe sometimes for everyone. So you are saying that it will be easier one day. Yeah, but here uh, the platforms give you an insight from this. In Foundation, you have a system which is like a, a vid. Yeah. Subasta. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I ask from 0 10 uh, Ethereum, and this was the first bidder, and you can see here which was, and then unblock get get the piece. So Great. he can re resell it again or make this was epic Great. for me. One Ethereum, it was like yeah, one Ethereum, I, yeah. At this time, like I'm thinking about in dollars, it's about two thousand dollars today. Ethereum. Yeah, so I'm saving it so I can uh, buy a new computer. So it it start like uh, transforming your your life yeah. and the way you're doing art because you yeah. have always a lot of ex excuses. I don't have like time. I don't have, I don't have like, the medium I need. Like but here, if you do well and you have luck or your artwork, it's appreciated for, for another, you can change the way you are doing art. So yeah. right now I, I, can, I can buy a new computer and I can buy time, start like working in, in stuff I don't like uh, and start like get a pay, paying out myself to make the art I want to do. This so, is amazing, man. That so you're using there... an, you're using NFTs to like work for yourself finally. After years and years, you work for the university. Now you started your own university like for fun, for share your crazy, but but now you can work by yourself as an artist. And you yeah. and you've and you've just started because I'm sure that you've got a lot of stuff still to drop, to mint and with, with your students too. Yeah, but I'm not like optimistic about it. I like yeah. Yeah. thinking that every time it will it will plop. explode. Yeah, blow up. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> I hope I hope not, and and I don't have arguments to to be suspicious about that. But I don't know. It's the way I feel, and maybe Argentinians are like pessimistic, and we we have a lot of instability that we are used. So when yeah. And maybe some countries say, no, this is the future in two years. In Argentina, we are we go to the banks and the banks get uh, rob all the money of the people and people with access uh, <laughs> breaking ATMs. Uh, yeah. It was... So we have secret so some very... No, not so near to NFTs, this... Yeah, we have like very crazy. So if it is a bubble, it's not problem. We will get get into yeah. and see what happens. Yeah, 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 exactly. This is why, yeah, I, I uh, we are always pessimistic about new stuff. But this time, I don't, I don't think about if I'm pessimistic and optimistic. I just jumped in and then let's see one day because anyway, I'm learning. So this is of course an opportunity. We don't know if NFTs will be the same. And if the same way we are seeing NFTs today, but of course there there will be some marketplace for digital artists in the future. So NFTs yeah. will evolve in any way. Maybe they won't ever be called any NFTs anymore. We don't know. But this is something yeah. that if you if we stay here, if we jump in like for collectors, for business, just for learning, just, like just for university. I hope that a university will be more and more courses about digital art and crypto art and all the opportunity related because it will be of course something that we will see more and more so yeah yeah so i hope that you will increase all this with your students and uh, i really wish you all the best for the 
for what you are, do, Thank you are you, doing Francesco. for the Argentina and please I hope that mm. you are going to bring it for the world so we are in a digital economy and I'm, I'm sure that you can connect with people and professors around, around the world please spread what you are doing because I, pers I work with Italian schools, I work with the government, Italian government like in schools and I can, I can say that we need something like this here and but I'm I I'm I think we need this in all the world so please keep pushing this thank you Francesco I want to add a little thing but maybe very important for people oh, which are watching this video and it's the environmental thing about NFT and yeah. I think you can like frame frame it in what it's called like a wicked problem and they, if you're like, um, have a conflict with ecological issues about NFT, this is a very, a great way to understand it, like a wicked problem. And there you can read it's that th those kind of problems who have a lot of interrelated. Uh, yeah. So when you start like saying right, wrong, yes or no, I will abstain and then it will be, well, it's a, a great uh, way to address this, this problem. Also to informate, to get information and to start like uh, changing stuff. But uh, that's something that, that it's very, um, an issue that every NFT artist uh, or NFT hater have to to try to understand like actively yeah great so what's your what's your advice for that in in the first step just learn it study it because so don't don't but yeah care about it because one day yeah. it, it will increase like a problem you think you think that N nfts will have like a bad um they will be bad for the environment you think one day I, I think that it's a wicked problem. So if you abstain for uh, be an NFT artist because you think that in that way you are helping the problem, yeah. maybe it's a narrow view. So yeah. informate yourself and yeah. yeah, and maybe 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 not everyone knows about that. But what's the relation? You say like how how NFTs are like a wicked problem because of the of the power generated from computers to mint nfts right this is yeah. what you're and, saying that can yeah be and it's and it gets wicked when you start saying that argument that and yeah. traditional art doesn't have an environment impact and planes yeah. people take it to buy biennales and go every around the world that doesn't have an impact and then you're you know then you are in the wicked scenario well you yeah. try to argument your position and yeah. a lot of things are correlating with, with what are you saying. Great. Or the way that my individual decision to don't get into NFT, it's saving the, the planet. When then you, you start getting in a wicked place, which is interesting to get into that debate. But the, the worst way to do it is with a like, rigid view about it. Great. Thank you for sharing. This is very important. Yeah. Thank you, okay. Francesco.